Deuteronomy chapter 26. And it shall be, when thou art come in unto the land, right, this is written to the Jews who are going in the land. Leviticus, they're going in the wilderness. Deuteronomy, they're going in the land. And the Lord thy God giveth thee for inheritance and possesses it and dwelleth therein. So when you're in that land, here's your laws. So even before they go into the land of possession, God sets up laws, regulations, and rules, the law. When you get in there, this is what you're supposed to do. This is your conduct. And if you go against, here is the penalty. Here is the crimes. Here is the result of the crimes. God wants them to love each other, and God wants them to have obedience to him. I mean, he doesn't want them doing whatever they want to do. The book of Judges. And Judges is a mess. And thou shalt take of the first of all the fruit of the earth. And this would be the, the grains, the olives, the grapes, the wine, uh, all the fruits of the land, all the vegetables, all the fruits, which thou shalt bring of thy land, everything that grows from the ground, that the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shall put it in a basket. Now that's quite interesting because when you see the pictures of uh, Thanksgiving, and I forget what that thing is called, but it looks like a horn. Cornucopia. Yeah. But what's that have to do with Thanksgiving and loaded with fruits and vegetables unless it comes from the Bible and would show you that the foundation of our Thanksgiving in America was to worship God. And we take the time of Thanksgiving of the pilgrims, their survival of that first winter and the help of the Indians when they gather together and when they tell you big lies about Thanksgiving. The fact is, thank you, God, we survived and don't know how many pilgrims died. And very few that survived. And here you see this basket-like thing with fruit coming out of it and came from God. The help of the Indians. And look what America has done to the Native American. We didn't thank them. It didn't last long. And shall go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name there. And that's going to be, in the long run, that's going to be under King David, Jerusalem, the temple built by Solomon. Uh... Oh, I hate my mind takes. I get in my in my mind, and it comes. one of the places where they do is said it was in Silo. But David establishes the place of the Jebusites, Jerusalem, and then Solomon builds that temple. And the place where the Lord will choose His name, well, Jesus Christ walks in that place called Jerusalem, and He suffers and dies without the city on a hill called Calvary. And thou shalt go in unto the priest that shall be in those days, whatever, whoever the priest is when you're living, and say unto them, I profess this day unto the Lord thy God, that I am come unto the country which the Lord swear unto our fathers for to give us. So, what you see here is the pledge of allegiance to God by the Jews. I am in this land because of God. I am settled in this land because of Jehovah. I am here because of the tender mercies of God the Father to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. Here's the Pledge of Allegiance right here. And the priest shall take the basket out of thy hand and set it down before the altar, the brazen altar of the Lord thy God. Then thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God. Now we're going to go into a history. We're going from a pledge and history pledge. A Syrian ready to perish was my father. He went down into Egypt. Well, that's Jacob. And sojourned there with a few. Genesis into Exodus. And became there a nation, great, mighty, and populous. 
So the foundation of these people who are in this land, be called by God, is Jacob and his sons. And we are reviewing the book of Exodus again. Has history been changed? I don't check, I don't review, but if a modern Bible has messed with chapter 26, then they rewrite history. And they're rewriting history today for their own purpose. So let's look at our father Jacob. And the Egyptians evil entreated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage. The book of Exodus. And when we cried unto the Lord our God our fathers. Book of Exodus. The Lord heard our voice and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. Well, look what the Egyptians did to the slaves called Jews. And those same people will cry affliction and oppression of American slavery, but look what the Jews went through. And no other nation in the world has ever gone through the oppression, the affliction, and the bondage of World War II through Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party to what they did to Jews. And yet there are people who are trying to rewrite and say that never happened. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt, Exodus, under Moses, with a mighty hand, and with an outstretched arm, and with great terribleness, and with signs and with wonders, the frogs, the lice, the boils, the darkness, the red, uh, the the Nile turned into blood, and notice how it is not given no credit, absolutely to Moses. Moses did not do all those with his rod. It was God using Moses, and He has brought us into this place. Not Moses. Moses died. Moses never enters into the promised land. He dies. Joshua did not go in. It was Moses and Aaron, but it is God you're to look at. Get your mind off the people. Our founding fathers. What about our founding God? Of the, 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 the writers and the, and the forgers of the Declaration of Independence. What about the Declaration of Independence that Jesus gives us upon the cross? The liberty, liberty that we get from being freed from our sins and the liberty we get from God that said, hey, you got a free will. Where's that? If we are looking at the Jewish history and God removes Mo Moses and Aaron and says, it's me. And America does the same thing. It removes God and places it with George Washington, with men and and. They're taking their eyes off God and put it upon men. In Jesus' time, oh, we are of Abraham. We are of Moses. And they never saw who Jesus Christ truly was, God. And when you tamper and mess with your history, oh, no ever such a prophet has ever come out of Galilee. Jonah? Forgot that one, did you? But who believes Jonah? And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, and with great terribleness, and with signs, and with wonders. And the Passover night, when the children are sitting around with the fathers, and the mothers are sitting there, and they're resting, and the Passover comes over, the fathers were explaining to the children, and read off the story before his family, this is what happened to us. It was to be reviewed, and memorized, and remembered every year at the Passover. And he has brought us unto this place and has given us this land, even the land that flows with milk and honey. Natural, natural preservatives, natural ability for the body to grow. Milk is not something that can be produced in a laboratory. Honey is produced by bees. 
cows, goats, and bees, their sweetness, their ability to nourish the body. And cows, if I can be, they eat grass and they make fertilizer. Honeybees go out and pollinate flowers that will become fruits and vegetation. When you see a cucumber or a tomato growing on that stalk begin to bud, there was a bee that visited that flower and pollinated it. And now, behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land, which thou, O Lord, God, you gave us the fruits. I am bringing the first fruits of whatever I have. Whatever it's a, it's a vineyard, or if it's olive tree, or if it's grain, if it's barley, I'm bringing what you gave me, God. So they are acknowledging a creator. Genesis 1. And we got all kinds of people in America today, and we got that day called Thanksgiving, and we give absolutely no credit to God at all. And when we, as a family, we preach at a farmer's market, we're there as a public ministry, and we watch all these people do business with fruits and vegetables, and they do not regard God on their mind. We've gone away. O oh Lord has given me, and thou shalt set it before the Lord thy God, and worship before the Lord thy God. Lord, this is yours. I'm going to praise and honor you. It's the way it's supposed to be. And thou shalt rejoice in every good thing which the Lord thy God has given thee. In everything Paul says, give thanks. Rejoice evermore, Paul says to the Thessalonians. And unto thy house, thou, and the Levite, and the stranger that is amongst you. Everybody rejoice. Why the Levite? Well, that's what he's going to get to eat. All these vegetables and, and fruits are coming to God, and the Levites get that. And they don't have to pay for it. God has given them produce. When thou hast made an end of tithing all the tithes of thy increase, the third year, so we bring the first fruits. Now in the third year, we're going to bring a tithe of the fruits of that third year, which is the year of tithing. And has given it unto the Levite. That's his due. That's his pray. That's his income. What God has blessed you as a nation, God is going to bless that Levite. The stranger, the Gentile. That's interesting. The Gentiles will take part in this blessing. The, the fatherless, he has no father to make a living in that household. And the widow, she has no husband. And look what it says, the tithes of the third year goes to the Levite, it goes to the stranger, it goes to the fatherless, it goes to the widow. There is no welfare in Israel, it is to be given by what you give to the, to the Levites, to God, that in turn goes and helps the Levite, his ministers, and those who can't not make a living. Then thou shalt say before the Lord thy God, I have brought away the hallowed things out of my house. So that tithing for the Jew is hollow. It's holy. And also have given them unto the Levite, and unto the stranger, and to the fatherless, and to the widow. According to all the commandments which thou hast commanded me, I have not transgressed thy commands, neither have I forgotten them. Now that's where churches will come in and force you, you must give a tithe. We're not under tithes in the church age. We are under the fact is, what you want to give to God, you give to God, you do it cheerfully, and you're not promoted, you're not hassled to give. 
to God. And when the church says give tithes, give tithes, 10%, and you give that 10% and you're griping and complaining about it, God is saying, hey, I don't want that and I'm not crediting it to your account. Paul writes that to the Corinthian church. God wants to say, hey, you're going to give money? Yes, Lord. You give what you want to give out of what I have blessed you with. And not grudgingly, in other words, oh, I have to do this because my pastor told me I have to. Now, some of these Jews could have brought the 10%. And, oh, man. There was one thing they would do. What, the sheep. They would line up the sheep and they'd bring them through this little sh short doorway. And they would line the sheep up and they had this marker. They would count one, two, three. And the 10 sheep they would mark with this marker. And then 11, 12, 13, 20 sheep they would mark with a marker. Every 10 sheep they would mark and they would put that one off to the side. That was God's. That was demanded every 10%. And that and that 10%, if that was like, wow, that's my best one. Ah, oh, man. And he gives it according to the law. But if that was us, oh, it's just all I got. I, I, I got, oh, man, I, I have the time. God says today, I don't accredit it. In the church age. Oh, I'm giving to the church. I know some people do. And I'll claim it on my IRS. God says, go ahead. You got your reward. You're not getting a reward from me. And here the tithes is used for the Levite. He's paid for his service. And for people who cannot make a living. The fatherless, the widow. I have not eaten thereof in my morning. Sadness. Complete sadness. Neither have I taken away aught thereof of any unclean use. I have done, I have not been defiled. Nor given aught thereof for the dead. Now that was when we went back and studied Beth Peor. They're giving food to the dead people. They are honoring food. Halloween trick or treat on a day for the dead. Knocking under trick or treat. Give me food for the dead people. And if you were to run that custom of trick and treating, you would find out that on Halloween they would bring food to the graveyards for their family to eat in the grave. But I have hearkened unto the voice of the Lord my God, and have done according to all that thou hast commanded me. I have done what you told me to do, God. Look down from thy holy habitation, heaven. It's a holy habitation. That's kind of weird because in Job 1 and 2 and Revelation 12, we read that Satan goes up to God's throne. And yet it's still holy. From heaven. So look down from thy holy habitation from heaven. What is the holy habitation? It's heaven. Where does God live according to the Bible? It's heaven. There it is. And bless thy people, Israel. Israel. Very so, of Jacob. And the land which thou hast given us, as thou swearest unto our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, a land that floweth with milk and honey, it takes care of itself. We are healthy people. Our country, our world is an unhealthy people because everything has been indoctrinated by science and chemicals. And God has never, ever required man to live by chemicals. Chemicals do not work with the body. This day the Lord thy God has commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thy heart, with all thy soul. Thou hast avouched the Lord this day to be thy God, and to walk in his ways, and to keep his statutes, and his commandments, and his judgments, and to hearken unto his voice. And the Lord has avouched, that's affirm. That's affirm. The people affirm the Lord their God as their God. God has affirmed them to be his people. A vouch shows up in only two places, and there it is in 16 and 18. Uh, 17 and 18. 
In first place is the people to God, and second place is God to the people, and it's only Israel. They say we acknowledge one God, and God says I acknowledge one people. Need this day to be a particular people. That's us. That's what Paul says we're to be. We're to stand out. I had a police officer one time tell me, oh, that's not what I would do as far as street preaching. Well, that's what the Bible tells you to do. There are people, oh, that's not what Jesus would do. Yes, he did. That's exactly how they could tell Jesus from the Pharisees and Sadducees. He did not do what they did, and they did not do what he did. And one of the things that Jesus did that they could not do is he was able to heal. They couldn't heal nobody. There was no one else that could do the healing like Jesus and his disciples. You're the standout. And it's too bad that in churches there are Christians who stand out more for God than other Christians. Particular people, as he has promised thee, and thou shouldest keep all his commandments to make thee high above all nations. So there is one nation over all nations, Israel, which he had made. So all the nations are made by God, but there's one nation above all those nations, Israel, in praise and in name and in honor. And that thou mayest be an holy people, the Jews, unto the Lord thy God, as he has spoken. So the people of Israel, with a creator that provides all things, and acknowledge one people over all the people, they are to acknowledge by a pledge that he is God, and we are his people, and he is blessing us, the creator. And to close, let's go to Revelation chapter 4. Those Jews were to show everybody what everybody is supposed to do. And if you ever had a question or you ever had somebody say to you, why am I here? To what purpose? What is the whole purpose of man? Revelation 4, verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure... They are and were created, and that is what all men are doing. That's what we see in our Deuteronomy study today. You acknowledge God's the creator of all the fruits and vegetables. It is God that had the power to bring us out of Egypt. There is no Moses, there is no Aaron, there is no Joshua mentioned. It's God. In the end, that we are that one people of God, we're to be particular, that we can point people, that we as Jews can say, we're the lighthouse. And if somebody ever want to search out God truly, well, there's those people over there, they got blue flinges on, and they have weird haircut, they do weird things with their beard, and they have a city that is bright and shiny, man, it, it just blows your eyeballs out. And they bring animal sacrifices to that place. And they proclaim to have the only God, the one true God of all there. That's what the Jews were. That's what Christians are supposed to be. Verse is supposed to be that somebody has trials and tribulations in their life. When they are trying to seek God, Christians are supposed to be standing out against the world. That they can say, there's something about you and I need your help. Particular people.